And our last speaker is Dr. Ban Cha Chun Chu Jit. Uh, today he will give us in a lecture in the topic of massive rotator cuff tear, my treatment strategy. Please Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Dr. Ban Cha Chun Chu Jit from Thammasat University. Uh, I'm talking about the strategies in massive rotator cuff tear. This is a definition of the massive cuff in the past. That means uh, you have bigger size, more than five centimeters. But nowadays, if you have two complete tendon tear, okay, uh, that means that this is a massive rotator cuff. Okay, so two tendon tear after debridement. Okay, and nowadays uh, the most updated one, 2020. If you have humeral head explosion more than 67 percent, that means two third. That means this is a massive rotator cuff. So these are the treatment strategies for the massive rotator cuff. So always try conservative first, okay? So not every loaded cuff need to be repaired. So you, you need to uh, uh, customize of treatment. I always start conservative in degenerative loaded cuff tear, not traumatic. Traumatic, I always do surgery, but in degenerative loaded cuff, we start with NSAIDs, fixed therapy, steroid injection, okay? Steroid, some, someone worry about steroid, but no worry, steroid is very good. Yeah, for even if you need to come back for the repair again from the little ages that found that you have no problem with the healing, even you inject the steroid. Okay, so uh, about 30 to 90 percent the patient respond well with conservative treatment. Okay, so this patient, 78 years old, she had the heart disease, uncontrolled DM. This is a massive rotator cuff. So I try conservative. I follow her for five years. She was still very happy. So I did not touch her. This is conservative. And she's the too risky to do any surgery. Yeah. So when you fail conservative, you can do the rotator cuff repair or other procedures. So this is a simple crew. Yeah. If you have uh, weakness, supraspinatus, uh, but you have good centers. Don't forget to do x-ray because HI is very reliable. If you have Good HI, most of the cases can be repaired and you have good cutalia, even you bad retraction. Sometimes the trauma case, retraction is so far, but you have good muscle quality, those loaded cuff can be repaired. Three factors that you need to consider. Number, number one is the cuff factors. Okay, how about the qualities, how uh, degree of retraction, fatty deterioration. Patient factors and the surgeon factors, yeah. Uh, experience and also the training. So we, we, we always concert, consider three factors. I prefer the beach chair position because there's this easy uh, mobilize and I'm comfortable to do this. I used to do the decubitus. I have back pain. I have AC joint problem. So I need massage every week <laughs> because back pain. I stopped doing decubitus. I do decubitus before. Okay. So these are my portals. I will have only four portal for general cuff, but if there are some biceps, uh, tenodesis or subscap, I will have another portal. Okay. So that's maximum is five portal. For the acromion, if the patient have big spur, okay, you have suicide side like this, large spur, I always clean the acromion. I don't believe the American little Asia. They said you don't need to decompress. That's not true. Yeah, you need to customize and look at the patient. Is there any acromion spur? If you have huge spur, Q spur, or irregular spur or fracture, also fine. You need to remove it. So for X-ray, upright and supine is not is not the same. For loaded cup, you need to do supine X-ray, not upright. Okay. Yeah, because uh, if you do upright X-ray, gravity will pull the arm down, and sometimes you have good HI. So from our study, we found that it's not the same. But like AC joint, you need upright X-ray. If you do supine, the deformity will not obvious. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, articles from Dr. Chu Han Oh. He found that if you do the traction view and you can collect uh, the HI more than 3.2 millimeters, this is a good factors for the cup repair. So like this acromion spur, we do we do decompress. I will not leave it because it's look very sharp, right? You can, this can damage your rotator cuff. But I will preserve my CA ligament. You see this CA? I try to detach it, but not cut it. 
okay, preserve the sea element. And the key, key point for the rotor cuff repair is a tension-free repair. You should repair your rotator cuff without tension. So before starting to repair, you should release first and do a cup mapping. Make sure that the cup has no tension. So that's the key. So we start the release first at the superior release. We release the, uh, like this is the subscapularis. I do release interval, okay? And uh, I preserve the comma tissues. And then you release the anterior release, colloquial humeral. This is very important, especially the massive cuff. If you have the uh, L shape in the back, you need to release colloquial humeral. Otherwise, you cannot reduce your loaded cuff. Release is from the colloquial process. And the posterior release, especially if the patient have some stiffness, you need to do MGHL, IGHL release before the repair. Okay, the chance of stiffness after the surgery will be less. Like this patient have L-shaped tear. First, don't worry, you can go to the colloquial process. That is the conjoint tendon. You see that? After you do, do the release of the colloquial humeral ligament, your cup mobility is getting better. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, you can release, but not go beyond the uh, medial side of the conjoint tendon. If you are lateral to it or under the colloquial process like this, your cup will be free, okay? So this is a... Uh, uh, Bursal side release, you can release your loaded cuff from the green oil, okay? Like this, okay? Make sure before the repair. And very important, stop breathing. Bursal removal, okay? To make it clean and nice. Stop the breathing, bursectomy before you're starting to do the repair, okay? We call this step Y crew. Yeah, you need to do nice preparation before starting to do the repair. And cup mapping is quite important. If you reduce it in the wrong way, this will be too much tension, okay? So you reduce this way, this is good because you have no tension, you see? So mapping first before starting to do, to do the repair. Sometimes it's L, sometimes reverse L, sometimes T-shape, okay? So you need to know the morphology before starting to repair. And enhance the healing. This is a simple way I do uh, using microfracture. I think it's very useful. You, you create a, a breathing raw surface underneath that would promote the healing. This, this is my publication. We call blended suture bridge technique. So we have 12 sutures, but we have only six holes. Don't put 12 holes in your rotator cuff because you can create a type two tear. Okay. Imagine you have too many holes. You have too many damage. And when you tie the knot, you can create the type two on strangulation of your rotator cuff. We call this one, two, three, three, two, one. Okay. So the concept is simple. You go one, two, three, and three, two, one. This gap is seven to eight millimeters. Okay. Not too close. This gap is five millimeters because I will not tie the knot in the middle. I will tie it in the posterior and anterior, but lift the middle to let the vascular supply getting into your rotator cuff. Okay. And then you tie the knot like this. Okay, that you have nice distribution because each hole you have two sutures. Okay, so like this one, yeah, we have the uh, massive tear. I sometimes I I share my suture to my subscapularis. This one also have subscapularis. Okay, and then we go one, two, three. Okay, and then we reduce the apex first. This one have the eight anterior apex. Okay, we reduce the apex in the front. Okay, after that we. Okay, tie it, okay, and finally we will have the, yeah, this is the, after the repair, you can have nice uh, suture distribution. This is one, two, three, and three, two, one. Okay, and you look at the intraticular part, you see the nice attachment of the rotator cuff. I used to do not less, not less look nice from outside, but once you look inside the joint, you can see the gap because you not tie the knot, okay. So I do limited knot tying. It's like high bridge. Okay? You can see the nice healing of the loaded cup. This patient has trauma. You look at the MRI. It looks so bad. This is infraspinatus, supraspinatus. But this is trauma, three weeks. Don't give up. In trauma, it's always like this, this big gap. Okay, but the patient have the good tissue. You can reduce it. This is L shape. You see, I can reduce the cuff to the anterior part. This is a loaded interval. Okay. And after that, you can make a one, two, three, three, two, one. And finally, you get the nice to suture distribution. Okay. Okay. That is after the repair. And this is post-op. 
one day, one month, ten weeks. Okay, you can have the. Uh, this is the healing. Yeah, after uh, the surgery, this patient, I uh, she's seventy years old. He tell me that he don't want to do reverse. He have the traumatic loaded cup tear, but this is about three months. Okay, you see proximal migration, but just look at the cutalia, it's nice. Okay, even you have big tear, supra and infraspinators. So we get in and we try to do uh, release, then we get the nice suture distribution. Okay, this is the one, two, three, three, two, one. And you look at the HI was collect after surgery and the cup, cup heal nicely, supra and infraspinators. This is two years after the surgery, okay? So supra and subscap, sometimes I shelling my suture to the subscapularis, yeah, like this one. Yeah, because most of the, most of the time subscap is a small tear. So I don't need to spend another anchor for the subscap. In case you have incomplete repair like this, nowadays we have like patch, okay, to augment, or you can use the bicep to do the augmentation, okay? So this one, I use a patch to augment my footprint. Yeah. So uh, when you cannot repair, the next step is to do something like balloon, SCR, muscle transfer, or reverse. Okay, so this is clinical. You have no center. That means SR is less than six, uh, poor cutalier, four, or pate three. So this situation, you need to do something else, okay? Because repair is impossible. So tendon transfer, the uh, postural superior, we prefer to do latissimus dorsi and lower trapezius become very popular right now, yeah. But I never tried that. Uh, for the anterior part, uh, I do the pec major transfer, yeah, for the anterior. This is the LD transfer. We transfer from the back, yeah, and attach in like this. This is a, a massive postural superior. And this is for the massive anterior Supria, subscap, pec major transfer. Balloon is, um, never try, we have no balloon in Thailand. Yeah, but uh, from the literature is temporarily, the patient can be better, but over time it's fail. For the SCR, we have the king of SCR in our meeting, Dr. Teru Mihata. And I learned from him many years ago, I visited Mihata in 2015. Yeah, and I learned the way to do the SCR. So the indication is the postural superior, not anterior. You cannot, you should have good subscapularis. You have poor subscap, if you have poor subscap or ir irreparable subscap, you cannot do SCR, okay? So good, subs good subscap, poor supra and infra, okay? And also uh, no arthritic change. So we do it in Havada one and two, yeah? So this is my position. At the beginning, I do this position where I come back from Mihata. But I have back pain and shoulder pain again. I'm not good uh, because we need to do this way. So I switch to beach chair position. First, I do this way. I make it in the same side. But uh, two teams cannot work very well because it's obstruct. So right now, I operate on the, I harvest from the opposite side. Because this is our position for the SCR. Okay. So this is our portal for SCR. So we, we uh, developed the triple lumens technique for the SCR. So it will be easier. You will not confuse. So first we cut the syringe like this. This is a spinal needle, okay? Lumen, we put three in one cannula. So you will not mix because you have three cannula. You can manage the suture proximal and the distal, okay? And then you can pass the graph easy like this, yeah. So this is the... Um, the triple lumen technique. This patient have the massive supra and infraspinatus. So we harvest the graft, okay, like this, and we have thick graft like eight millimeters. So nowadays, if you have thin graft, you can put the dermal patch in, inside, like uh, we had that show us. So then I put the anchors for anchors like this. I always make side to side. I do difference from uh, Mihata. Mihata did not tie the anterior part, yeah, but I, I prefer to tie it and I use my finger in. Mihata push in, but I prefer to pull in, yeah. Then you can remove your cannula and put this in. One and minute. then make side to side repair, okay. So this is the SCR, okay, using the um, tensor fasciolata.
Okay, and this is the MRI after surgery. So the patient have good strength and good clinical outcome after the surgery. So for the bicep, we can reroute the biceps to uh, to augment our repair. But it, bicep ACR is not comparable to Mihata ACR because it's too small. Okay, like this patient had massive subscap. You see, the subscap is gone. So we do the release and repair the subscap back. So this is before and after the repair. And the patient have good outcome. Yeah. The last option is the reverse. So we, we discuss the patient. If the patient want one surgery and last long, I choose reverse. Okay. So it should be around 70. We change the mechanics of the shoulder. This patient have the weak. Okay? He is very active. He like to play golf again, so we do reverse for him. Yeah. So after surgery, the patient can go back to golf again. Yeah. This patient had a uh, problem with he need to use wheelchair bilateral. So I he finally had torn loaded the calf and cup tear atrophy. We do bilateral reverse for him. So in conclusions, so the loaded the calf massive loaded the cup tear. So you should judge the patient one by one. Yeah. Try conservative first for the uh, degenerative tear, but for traumatic tear, I jump to do the surgery right away. Okay, and don't forget this algorithm yeah, of the loaded cup repair. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Professor Ben Chia.